Sometimes I look back at the midterms I made and I'm like, how do I even do this question? Implement the fset function, which returns two functions that together represent a set. Both the add and has function return whether a value is already in the set. The add function also adds its argument value to the set. You may assign to only one name in the assignment statement. You may not use any built-in containers, such as a set or dictionary or list. Before we get into the question, here's a few important concepts. First, a set can be defined as a function. Look at this function, 3 and 5. For this set, this function, return x equals 3 or x equals 5, acts exactly the same as calling has on a set that has 3 and 5. The second concept is that the computer never forgets frames that it makes, so we can use those as our containers. In the description are test cases that I think you should study to try and figure out how the function works. For this question, I want to talk about the function first and then give you some advice on how to figure it out. Here's the function in its entirety. At this point, we have an empty set. So has is always going to return false no matter what we pass into has. You might be wondering why it is that we nest items in a lambda function instead of just returning items. It's important to remember that when we return an object, we return an object. If we returned items as it were, if we added anything, it would make the has function inconsistent because it would always return false. We need to refer to items, but in a way to refer to what items it's referring to rather than what it actually is. That's what this lambda function does. It's a function that searches for a function named items in the environment and then executes it. You can think of this as returning an explicit function while this returns an implicit function. It's a subtlety of the Python language that you're hopefully now aware of. The logic for the rest of the code, I think, follows pretty easily, especially if we think of items as our container. When we look at add, we'll see why it's important that we refer to items implicitly. For one, we declare the items functions con or container to be non-local, and then we set f to be the items we have so far. Remember what I said earlier about sets being defined as functions? That concept comes up here. Since this is the function which adds a value, from our understanding of sets as functions, it'll be a set that checks if the input is the added value or any values added before it. And since f is the items that we have so far, that's why this new lambda function is lambda x, x equals y, or f of x. Now we've truly added to items because it contains our new value and all values it had before. So then why do we return f of y? Remember that add also returns if the value we're adding was already in the set. And since f contains all previous values, it'll contain all values that were already in the set. So we'll call f on our added value to check if it was already in the set. Now you're probably wondering how to figure all this out. Well, let's look at the skeleton code. This return statement should hint that we'll be returning items. It's not totally correct, but it's on the right track. Next, this completely empty line right here should stand out. A common pattern in these exams is that this is where something is declared non-local. This is especially true with this question, given the, the restrictions as well as how all other lines aren't empty. This isn't always true, but given these circumstances, it's a reasonable assumption. The question then is what is declared to be non-local? It'd probably be items, right? There's really nothing else that it could be. And if items is made non-local, then we'll have to mutate it somewhere. Otherwise, what's the point? The only other place we can mutate items is this line here. Up to now, we've used a kind of reasoning that doesn't depend on us knowing the set as function concept, and I'm not really sure you could progress any further without knowing that concept or figuring it out during a time test. But let's assume that you do. Notice that only when we add is items mutated. So if we haven't added, then items hasn't been changed. That should hint to you that this here is the base case. And since has refers to items, the base case for a set is an empty set, which doesn't have anything, which will mean that this returns false. Since items is here, generally, if you have two things with the same name, they need to do the same thing. And since we're in the add function, given our knowledge of the set as function concept, our new set is the union of the new value and the old set, which we've set to f. That's how you derive this line. From our understanding of sets, this return statement will have to see if our new value is in the old set f. And from our understanding of sets as functions, we'll return f of our inserted value, which is how we get this line. Our function isn't correct yet. This return statement is still wrong. And I'm really sorry, but I'm not sure how you could reason from this to this, unless you knew about it beforehand, which hopefully this video has taught you. 
It looks like we're done, and we can move on to the next question.